All right, we are recording. Light one, light two. Let's move it. Does that work? Oh yeah, it does. Nice. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a different setup again this time. Uh, I'm in my living room, but a little bit of a different angle. But today I wanted to talk about lenses with you guys. Um, I felt kind of inspired to do so. So uh, yeah, let's do it. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat, it's because my hair is a complete mess since quarantine. I also haven't been able to uh, get a haircut, so that's why I'm wearing a hat. Welcome back, like I said. Uh, today we're gonna talk about lenses. So camera lenses are a very complicated uh, piece of equipment, um, and that is a huge disclaimer I wanna put at the beginning of this video, is that in this video, I kinda wanna teach you the basics and sort of give you a fundamental understanding of how they work in the sense that you know what specifications to look for, know what the specifications mean when you read them, and more importantly, know which ones are important for you. So instead of just telling you what are good lenses, what are bad lenses, or just giving you an in-depth scientific explanation of what lenses do, there's tons of videos out there and tons of articles out there if you're interested in those uh, in that kind of stuff. Uh, I do recommend reading about it, um, but in this video, I just wanna give you a basic understanding. So the comparison I like to make is instead of having a chef tell you exactly step-by-step step how to make a certain recipe or how to make a certain dish, I personally find it a lot more interesting to learn uh, 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 about why things happen, you know? Why does my meat burn when I leave it into the pan in a hot pan for a long time? Like you and I obviously know it's because of the heat, but it's important to fundamentally understand why that is because if you know, okay, if I put meat in a pan, when it's really hot, it's gonna burn, then you're gonna know that for all food that you put in a pan. You know, this sounds like a really dumb example, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So in this video, instead of giving you a step-by-step -step thing to look at when you're buying a lens, I wanna give you more of a broader perspective on how they work, uh, and more importantly, what specifications to look for, and then you can make your own decision when buying a lens in the future. All right, so now that that's out of the way, my weird metaphor is out of the way, uh, we can get started. The three things I wanted to talk to you about when it comes to camera lenses are in order the f-stop the focal distance and the focus distance and that last one i think is a little underexposed especially for beginners so stay tuned for that one so the first one i wanted to talk about is f-stop we won't be talking about it too long because i did talk about it at length in my first video i uh, put an information card in the top right corner i explained a lot more about f-stop but just in short, what it means, f-stop is actually uh, the measurement for aperture. And essentially, the lower the f-stop, the more open the lens can be, so the more light comes in, but it also creates a shallower depth of field. So for example, this footage was shot at f2.8, and you can see the background behind me is pretty blurry, but I'm in focus. If I would up that f-stop, my image will get darker, but my background would get more sharp. Low f-stop lenses are usually a bit more expensive because having a low f-stop is a very, very great advantage when you're uh, doing photography or when you're doing filmmaking. Main two reasons being in cinema or when you're making videos or, or when you're shooting portraits, having that very shallow depth of field is a very um, sawed off uh, a feature, you know, a lot of people look for that nice blurry background with the with the subject in focus. And the other reason, quite obvious, with the lower f-stop, like I said, more light can get into your lens. Uh, so even in darker uh, environments or in darker situations, you're still able to get good exposure. And the other reason why uh, these, these lenses are usually a little bit more expensive is because if you have a low f-stop, that means your shutter speed can be higher. Uh, like I said in my first video, higher shutter speeds or faster shutter speeds uh, obviously create a darker image because you know your shutter is open for a, a, a shorter amount of time than with a longer uh, shutter speed. Uh, obviously, if you want a very, very high shutter speed, you're gonna have to compensate either with ISO and f-stop. Like you know, ISO creates or puts grain in your images, so you don't want that. So you wanna put your f-stop as low as possible. Now, if you have a camera that can go very low, it's like f1.8 or f2.8, that means that your shutter speed can be higher ergo your lens is faster your camera can take pictures faster so f-stop is the first specification to look at actually quite simple lower f-stop essentially just means better lens uh, we'll get to uh, what a better lens is right at the end of this video because there's a, there's a lot of stuff that comes into the lenses uh, but that makes them better or worse uh, but for now lower f-stop essentially means a better lens. So the second thing about lenses that you need to know is focal distance. Now this one makes a lot of sense. Everyone I think in their life has had a point where they held a compact camera that had like a 20, 30, 40 times zoom on it. And focal length essentially just is that. Uh, the higher your focal length, focal length is expressed in millimeters, 
um, the more zoomed in your picture is. So if you have a say 200 or 250 millimeter lens, that means it's very zoomed in. So it takes the image very close. So you can be like a couple of meters away from someone, you can still see them very close in your frame. And obviously it also goes the other way around. Very low focal lengths, say 16 millimeter or even 10 millimeter is just extremely wide. So that means that even though you're really, really close to a subject, you're still gonna be able to capture a lot of information in your picture or in your video. Now, now let's get to the third one. Um, I'm going to try to explain this one as quickly and as clean as possible, uh, but I do notice that this is something that is sometimes a little bit complicated to understand. That's why I feel like a lot of beginners just skip it. Uh, but I really recommend you 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 watch through this part and really recommend you you get some knowledge about this because it's actually very important. So what I see a lot of beginners do is they'll look for a lens with the lowest f-stop possible which I can understand. You wanna get that shallow depth of field because it just looks so professional. You want that blurry background. It looks cinematic, it looks professional. Shooting portraits is probably one of the first things you would do. A lot of photographers start out doing that because you know that's usually where you start making money or that's usually where you're helping out friends. You know, you have people maybe getting engaged or you have friends that want a, a new headshot for their LinkedIn account or for their Facebook profile picture and they'll ring you up and they're gonna want a nice portrait photo that that's why a lot of beginners want a low f-stop now the thing with lower f-stops is that you do need to understand also what the focus distance is of your camera now with portraits this isn't necessarily going to be a problem but when you're trying to shoot for example wildlife so little bugs or little flowers or really get close into subjects this actually could be a problem for you so you can find the focus distance on your lens, kind of depending on the lens manufacturer. It's in different places, but usually every lens has somewhere on it, has these white little letters talking about the focal length, the f-stop, some other stuff, uh, the thread size, filter thread size, uh, but also the focus distance. And it's usually expressed, at least where I'm from, uh, in meters, so zero point something meters. So focus distance is kind of like the name already implies. It's the minimal distance you need to be from something for your lens to be able to focus on it. In other words, it's basically the closest you can get to something without it falling out of focus. So let me just get an example here. This is the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, a great lens for portraits. And you'll see here on the back, it says 0.35 meters of focus distance. Essentially, what that means is that you need to be 35 centimeters or 1.1 feet away from a subject before it falls out of focus. Now, like I said, for portraits, that shouldn't be a problem. You know, you don't want to be 35 centimeters away from your subject when you're taking photos of them. It's more likely that you're like a couple of feet or like a meter away from your subject. But if you want to take a photograph, for example, a flower or a bee or a little ladybug on a flower or maybe something in the grass, 0.35 meters or 1.1 feet is actually pretty far away. So if you want to you know, really get in close, you'll notice that your camera won't be able to focus. So if you put it on manual focus, uh, you can just keep turning and keep turning and keep turning. But eventually, you know, you're at that point where where it's, you know, on its minimum focus or maximum focusing distance or minimum focusing distance, I should say. Uh, and you can just keep turning it, but nothing will happen. And if you put it on autofocus, you can half press that shutter button, but it will keep giving you that red little AF box that it just won't focus. It will start to jitter and nothing, it just won't work. And that has to do with that minimum focusing distance. Now, um, this obviously, like I said, isn't a problem for a lot of users, but I do think it is very important to note that um, it is something to look out for. You know, it, it is a setting or like a specification, I should say, to look out for when buying a lens. So the focusing distance on this guy isn't really, really close. Uh, it doesn't really let you do macro photography as it's commonly referred to. And macro photography is the type of photography where you do get in really, really close. You know, you, you, you really get close to the flower, to the ladybug, to anything super small that you wanna get in sharp. Now, you can't just look at focusing distance alone. You have to look at it in combination with the focal distance. Right here, I have an EFS lens. Uh, this one is a 55 to 250 millimeters. Now, if I look on this, lens, uh, you'll see that it has a uh, focus distance of 0 0.85 meters. Um, so that's like 50 centimeters further away than this guy was. But this one is labeled macro and this one isn't. 
Why is that? Well, the simple answer is the focal length. This guy can go up to 250 millimeters, yet the focus distance is 0.85. That focus distance will always mean the distance between the front of your lens physically and the subject. So basically the physical distance between you and the subject. So if you have a higher focal length like this guy going up to 250 millimeters, it will bring in that subject really, really close yet it can focus up to 0 0.85 uh, meters. So that means essentially, as long as you're 85 centimeters away from your subject, it will be sharp. Even though with this guy, you can go up to five times as close with the focal length than this guy does. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Essentially, a higher focal length means you can bring in your subject closer, almost like digitally, you know, your camera brings it in closer, yet you can be away a bigger distance and still have that macro capability. Whereas with this one, yes, you can get physically closer, you know, the focus distance on this one is lower, except that the focal distance is also lower. So that means that being 35 centimeters away from something is still going to be pretty wide perspective. Whereas with this one, if you're 85 centimeters away from something, you're still going to get that really, really close into your camera. Okay. So I died. I tried my best to sort of explain the three main things about lenses. I hope it kind of made sense. I hope it wasn't tedious. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me for a little bit longer here. Cause I want to do one more disclaimer about this. And that is to talk about the miscellaneous stuff about lenses. Now, what I just told you, these three settings, these are the main specifications. I keep saying settings. These are the three main specifications of a lens, meaning that if you truly understand these and if you truly get a feel for it, you'll know which lens fits your needs. And obviously, if you're in doubt, you can always just Google sample footage or sample pictures of a lens and you'll see what that low f-stop does. You can look at the difference between f1.8 and f2.8. Maybe f2.8 is low enough for you, depending on your situation, depending on what kind of videos or what kind of photos you want to make. But what you really need to understand about lenses is that when you're building a lens or when a manufacturer is building a lens, all they're doing is compromising. Um, and that means that if you want a low f-stop, chances are you are compromising something else. And there's dozens of things that I didn't tell you about lenses that do matter. And for two reasons, one, I simply don't know them all. And two, then this video would be a couple hours long. Uh, and that is because, you know, uh, there, there's the f-stop, but there's also the transmission of light, for example. And for you and me, starting YouTuber, starting photographers, this doesn't really matter too much. But for example, someone uh, that is making a Hollywood production that does matter a lot. And there is a reason why the, this 35 millimeter lens I'm shooting on is 500 bucks, but there's also a 35 millimeter cine lens by Canon that is like five or 6,000 bucks. That is not just Canon wanting you to splurge money. It's not just big camera manufacturers taking advantage of big Hollywood budgets to a degree. Sure, some of it is, but mostly it's also because the quality of those lenses is just a lot higher. What we're dealing with here is just a big complicated thing that is on top of your camera. A lot of it is glass. You can talk about the quality of the glass. Uh, you can talk about how fast it can focus on things. And those are just, just scratching the surface of what is possible in a lens, but more importantly, where lenses need to compromise. So if you're a starting photographer, starting filmmaker, EFS lenses, or the Nifty 50, those lenses are great and I think they will really, really up your game and really up the quality of both your photos and your video. But do keep in mind that as you uh, grow and as you learn more about these products, you're going to find out why cine lenses, for example, are thousands of bucks and why most lenses we use are only a couple hundred bucks and why L series lenses are like sometimes two and a half, three times the price of the camera body. There's reasons for that. And I hope you understand that, but I do hope this video gave you a basic understanding of lenses, a basic understanding of how that works and gave you an idea of like, okay, what to look out for, uh, uh when browsing lenses and what lens do I need for my projects. So from quarantine, I want to say thank you very, very much for watching. I hope everyone is, uh, is staying safe, stay inside as much as possible. Keep that six feet distance or one and a half meters if you live in a normal country. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.